any book that deals with the atrocities that took place during Nazi Germany is always a difficult read. The likes of The Book Thief and The Tattooist of Auschwitz come to mind. Two books that tell very different tales, but each is a powerful piece of literature and evokes powerful and melancholic emotions. The Boy in the Striped Pyjamas is another book detailing the incredulous and soulless decisions made by Nazi Germany during World War II. However, this book explores this world through the eyes of a young boy named Bruno, who is the son of a German commander at the infamous concentration camp in Poland, known as Auschwitz. You may know this book from the famous film adaptation that was released some years back. Perhaps you didn't know that the film was based on a book published in 2008, written by author John Boyne. There is controversy with this work, and that is with its depiction of Auschwitz, Germans, and the behaviour of the children throughout. Scholars and historians have a lot to say about the accuracy of this book, so please regard this as a fictional tale somewhat loosely based on events. You should know before reading reading that many deem this work as inaccurate. Nonetheless, I'm here to review this book and I'm certainly not qualified to comment on its integrity, so let me give you some insight into this tale. The book starts in a family house in Berlin, described as a property with many rooms and many different places to explore. All these descriptions come from the young narrator Bruno, who is blissfully unaware of the true reasons for the changes unfolding around him. Bruno lives in the family home with his mother and father, who are left unknown named, and his older sister, who's called Gretel. Bruno is age nine at the beginning of this story, and although his sister Gretel's age is not explicitly stated, I suspect her age is around 12 or 14. Bruno describes her as 13 going on 14, but this is likely an exaggeration. Regardless, the two are both young children who are not entirely aware of what is happening around them, and that is a key theme of this work, the notion of innocence. Bruno and his family rather suddenly leave Berlin and move to a smaller house, which Bruno and his sister both dislike quite strongly. Stranger still, a large fence appears next to the house, enclosing thousands of people in. The question of why people are there is always a difficult one for Bruno and his sister. They are oblivious to the true evil that is taking place so close to their home. Bruno begins to wander the land around him and follows the perimeter of the fence for some time when he sees a boy of similar age to himself sitting down and looking outward. We learn that this young boy is called Shmuel. Bruno cannot at first comprehend why he looks so skinny and malnourished. The two boys meet in the weeks ahead and talk about their own childhood experiences, Shmuel's being completely different from Bruno's. The true tragedy of this work is that Bruno does not judge Shmuel in the same manner that the Germans do. He sees him as a child and nothing else. This judgment in many ways makes Bruno a better person than appears around him, Bruno's innocence does not see race, does not see colour, he sees these individuals as they are, as human beings. Despite what is happening around him, Bruno does not fully comprehend the situation. As the story progresses, Bruno learns more and more, but often tries to rationalise what he's seeing and hearing. I think deep down he knows of the horror that is occurring on the other side of the fence, but he refuses to accept it, purely because of how how backward and wrong it is. Bruno is innocent and unaffected by the propaganda of the regime. As such, he finds it difficult to understand the human cruelty that is occurring. I warn you now that I will be discussing the ending here, so if you haven't read this book and intend to, please see my video link where you can grab yourself a copy. Bruno's lack of understanding for what is happening on the other side of the fence and his desire to change the situation and inform his dad is what leads to his demise. In a shocking turn of events, Bruno asks to see the other side of the fence, but is afraid he will be spotted as he's not wearing the same clothes as everyone else, clothes he initially describes as striped pyjamas, hence the name of this work. Shmuel might manages to find an extra pair of clothes for Bruno to wear, and so he crawls under the fence and into the concentration camp. It's at this point that your heart will no doubt sink as you know something bad is about to happen. Bruno and Shmuel find themselves in a crowd of people marching towards some type of building. Upon entry, Bruno finds himself suddenly very afraid and holds Schmuel's hand tightly. The two, along with all others they are with, meet their untimely demise, and the author of this work mentions it so casually it's hard to bear. The lack of detail and instead the focus on emotion in this final scene makes it all happen so suddenly. It is a very powerful and tragic moment.
This book is sad in many ways. The manner in which Bruno dies and his lack of understanding of what is happening makes you wish he had someone to guide him, someone to tell him what's really happening. You are left powerless as the reader as you watch him go under the fence. As soon as it occurs, you know that Bruno's fate is sealed. This is a simple book, perhaps too simple for some. It does not go in depth into many things, and I'm sure that's why people are somewhat annoyed at it. It is written through the eyes of a child. And it doesn't use complex language. It's meant to be just a, not an easy read from the topic it's talking about, but in its, in its words, it's meant to be easy to get through. It doesn't really go very in depth into the true evil that's happening across the fence. It doesn't add too many details. It is essentially a boy who's moved into a house and who's looking over at the fence but not understanding what's happening. Of course, some people might have issue with that, considering the things that were happening over there would be very plain to see, I imagine. The ending comes about, as I've said, very suddenly, and it's uh, the lack of, uh, the, the, the suddenness of it certainly makes it quite shocking, although it's, it is somewhat predictable. I think you know when reading this book what will happen, and that will off uh, will put some people off it. It nonetheless, it still has a strong message. This book, and it's that people can be blinded by their own evil. And maybe sometimes we should ask if children can be as cruel as adults, particularly when those adults are viewing others with eyes of hatred and not that of compassion, as Bruno does. My friends, thank you very much for watching this book review. The book I'll be re reviewing next week is An Artist of the Floating World by Kazuo Ishiguro. I say next week, I understand there's been somewhat of a delay with this book review, my apologies. I have already finished An Artist of the Floating World. Again, please see the video description below for any information about that book. Um, let me know your thoughts on this book. I understand it's very controversial. I haven't touched so much on that controversy because I don't feel I'm, well, I've researched enough to understand it. I don't want to offend anyone by saying something without actually knowing what I'm talking about. Did you like this book? Did you dislike this book? Please let me know in the comments below. If you liked this video, please drop me a like. If you didn't, drop me a dislike and please subscribe for more book reviews. I have a book review page on Goodreads and you can also follow my personal page on Goodreads to see all the latest books I'm reading. My friends, thank you again very much for watching. I will see you here again soon. Bye-bye.